Hi, I'm Cliff Gray with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides, and today I'm going to go over uh, my day pack that I use for sheep and goat hunting here in Colorado. And then uh, after I go through it, uh, actually one of my guides, Jimmy, is going to go through his uh, day pack setup. Uh, you, you will see some similarities, but you'll also see some differences, um, which I think is a good thing. I think people get a little stuck on exactly specifics of what a certain person uses. So you can look at what I use, you can look at what Jimmy uses, and then you can kind of use your own judgment because you will see some differences and you, you'll get your preferences over time. Um, so most of this stuff uh, that I'm going to talk to you about today is really for day hunts. When I say day hunt, Generally, it's like a long day hunt. We're going out in the morning, usually from a road accessible glassing point or, or trailhead. We're hiking in, we may not come back till after dark. So this is the setup for those type of hunts. In another video, we can go over more of like a true backpack, multi-day multi backpack hunt. So anyways, um, the first thing I'll go over is clothes real quick. And uh, the one thing about clothing is Again, there's even variation between the days, what the weather looks like, if I know for sure there's going to be thunderstorms in the afternoon or whatever, I may, might cho choose a different selection. <clears throat> but this will give you a, give you a place, to, place to start. So on pants, um, to be honest, the most common one I've been wearing for the last couple years are these Prana Stretch Zions. Uh, they're great pants, they're lightweight, they're super comfortable. When you first buy them, they have a little wind resistance and a little rain resistance. I noticed that after you wash them, probably 15, 20 times, that goes away. And really what you're stuck with is, you know, a non-waterproof pant. And the other thing about this, I notice in the high alpine for sure, is that if it's windy, which in almost all these goat and sheep areas, when you get up high, it will be <clears throat> windy once your thermals pick up, even on a nice, calm, non-stormy day. But that wind will hit these pants and it'll, it'll shear right through them. Um, that's just a negative I'm pointing out because it's, it's a reality. But outside of that, these for the money, they're like $50 pants. I don't think you can do a whole lot better. And you can always wear a, a base layer uh, underneath if you feel like it's really you're constantly getting cold. I'll go over a couple alternatives. I use these for years. These are like a, these are, these are, I believe they're, it's Sport Hill, the company, um, but these, I think they're called their utility pants. Um, unfortunately, they're discontinued, but they're actually like a pant that was specifically made for like active snowshoeing. Um, I find that they got a fairly um, robust wind resistance to them. Uh, they're not waterproof by any means. They're almost like a, they're like a wool mix almost is what they feel like to me. Um, but if you can find them, they're a great pan. I've done, you know, dozens of hunts with them. Uh, you can see these actually have duct tape all over them just because I'm trying to keep them together. But they're a good option. And the thing about them is they're super comfortable. Uh, they're probably even more comfortable than the Zion pants and they're, they're warmer. Um, but when it, you do find them online, they're like two or three hundred bucks. There's kind of like a cult following of sheep hunters that pick these up, even on eBay, I notice. So they probably not worth the money, but they're, they're an option. Another pant here that'll just give you an idea of what I use for sheep hunts. This is a Chinook pant by Kuyu. Um, I like these pants. <clears throat> and I actually like the knee pads. Um, I was actually talking to Jimmy about it. He's not a big fan of knee pads, but I, I do like them in my pants. This kind of knee pad that's just like a mellow one. In my Sitka Timberline pants, I actually take the knee pad out uh, because they're too, it's too bulky for me. Um, but these Timberline pants, and I'll, I'll get to them afterwards, but um, just as a little aside, even when you pull the knee pads out, they still have extra protection on the knees, which to me is kind of, I mean, this, this knee pad is very equivalent to, to this Kuyu deal. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> these pants, these are Chinook pants. I don't believe they make them anymore. I like them, super comfortable, actually very similar in feel to these um, sport heel pants. <clears throat> the only thing about them is these pants tear up really easy. You can, these, I, this is probably, these, this pair has probably been on three or four hunts and you can see that it's already some seams and stuff are breaking on the back. Um, and that's probably just from sitting on shale or whatever and glass and moving around. It is hard on pants, but, um, you know, they're just, they're just not as tough, but super lightweight, all the high tech QU stuff in them. So that's a, that's an option. Yeah. And they're good pants. I, I think, you know, some of those other pants like the attack pant and, 
and other stuff they offer is just as good. Um, and then the last pant is this Timberline pant by Sitka. This is a really heavy pant for sheep and goat hunts. Um, but if I know it's going to be cold, I will, I will wear it. And I guess heavy is probably not the best, the best way to put it. What it is is it's warm. So it's got, to me, this is a really almost, it's almost like a neoprene type of fabric. So it doesn't breathe very well. Like a lot of times around my knees and stuff, I actually notice I'm sweating like just around the knee. Um, so <clears throat> they do get warm really fast. So like late, if I'm going like late season goat hunt after the 20th of September, um, I will wear these sometimes. Um, I wear them a lot when I'm guiding elk hunts in the later seasons, but I do use them there like the 20th to October 10th, kind of that gap of sheep and goat hunts. They're really good pants. I mean, if you're gonna buy only one, you know, if you wanna spend money on this type of pants that are a couple hundred bucks, and you want one that's gonna get you through elk hunting or whatever later in the fall, and is gonna suffice for sheep and goat hunting. It's a pretty, pretty good pant. And the, the other thing that's cool about it is it's got this waterproof butt thing, which is pretty slick. When you're, anytime you're up in the high country glassing, generally you're gonna be sitting somewhere um, where there's some moisture. So that, that helps you out. Um, you'll see I carry a little pad. Uh, I believe Jimmy does too, or maybe he carries actually a, a crazy creek, I think. But I carry a little pad that I sit on that helps that too. But if you don't have that, this, you gotta expect on your pants that you're gonna tear up that butt like I did on these Chinook pants. So that'll give you some options on the pant front. Um, this is, <clears throat> if I am wearing like a lightweight pant or like, like a Prana Zion, I'm more apt to bring my Yukon rain gear pants, um, but I don't always do it. If there's low chance on these day hunts of an afternoon thunderstorm. Doesn't look like I'm gonna have to deal with it. <clears throat> I'll leave this home. The reality is, is this Yukon rain gear is awesome, but it's pretty heavy and it's pretty bulky for, for a day hunt, at least in my opinion. I always bring the jacket, which I'll show you in my pack, but this is kind of an optional item. I just kind of weigh it against if I'm wearing lightweight pants and I, I think I might need it, uh, I will bring it. Because the other thing is if you do, if you're gonna glass a long time and you put this over, like a pair of Prana Zions or even the Sport Hill pants or whatever, this will uh, stop the wind from freezing your ass off. So that's, that's a good setup. Um, other clothing, I usually will bring like a soft shell. Usually when I'm, doing, when I'm hiking out with my backpack, I'll have like, I might have a base layer um, of, I always wear merino, that's just my preference <clears throat> over synthetics, but either synthetic or merino will work. I'll have a base layer, and then um, if it's really warm that day, a lot of times I won't even have a base layer. I might just wear a t-shirt. Um, it's kind of a, a sin in the mountains, but I'll, I'll admit to wearing cotton a fair amount of the time. Um, and some, I actually sometimes will wear like a light wool shirt, even like one I got from a thrift store or something. So. Um, I'm not really specific about that, but usually when I'm hiking out, I have that layer, and then I wear a soft shell. This is just a Cryptek one. I think this is called the D-A-L-I-B-O-R jacket. I don't know how to pronounce it. Dalibor, I guess. Um, this is a great jacket. I like it. It's got a nice hood. The hood fits comfortably. So I can hike out with that layer on, easy to take off as I hike up the mountain. Usually on day, on day sheep and goat hunts, you are, your, your first hike is gonna be vertical, so generally I'm not gonna wear a lot of layers and get myself soaking, soaking sweating from going up elevation. Um, but, uh, so anyways, that jacket usually comes off pretty quick. And there's very, I mean, Kuyu's got their guide jacket soft shell. There's tons of soft shells. You can even get, you know, a non, camo one or whatever. And I guess that another short caveat is that really on the sheep and goat stuff, you don't have to be super specific about your camo. Um, I think, I do think dark colors or camo are probably advantageous. Uh, in Colorado, you don't have to wear orange on sheep, goat, and goat hunts. Um, but it's not the end of the world. I think if you're wearing dark colors, you'll, you'll be okay. <clears throat> um, the other thing I always have is I always have an insulation layer. This Kenai, jacket and this isn't the there's a new one that's a little heavier um that i've thought about purchasing but this kenai jacket with the hood always is in my pack and just as an insulation layer um, when i sit down to glass i'll stick it under my soft shell and probably one of the 
This Kenai specifically, in terms of the Kuyu gear I have, is probably one that I use more than anything else. Um, if, for some reason, I'm not carrying this, I do have a marmot down jacket that, that the advantage of it is, is it's less bulky. Like this Kenai jacket, like it's, you know, it is, you can pack it down, but it's like not that, that tiny. I have a little marmot down jacket that I can get this big and the same deal, I'll stick it in my pack. Kind of most of a safety thing, like if I had to spend the night, if it got extra cold or whatever. The only thing is the Kenai jacket is synthetic insulation, so if it got wet, it's not the end of the world with that down jacket it is. So if I wear a down, if I have a down jacket, I generally um, will always put it in a dry bag in my pack so it doesn't get wet. And then <clears throat> I do carry a pack cover. I don't have it with me, but it's like a $5 thing off Amazon. You can put it on there if it's soaking. What ends up happening for me is I don't always put my pack cover on because it makes everything a pain in the ass to get to. So a lot of times, like my key stuff in my pack will have its own uh, waterproof barrier. Like that's a more sophisticated way of saying like a Ziploc bag or one of these dry bags. So like sat phones, electronic stuff like that. I generally will have them waterproof inside because this, the, like this Kafaru pack um, is really just denier deal, so it's not gonna be waterproof. Um, but if it rains a little bit, no big deal. I still, my, my stuff is protected. So that covers that. The last thing is I generally wear a wool hat, um, just personal preference. You can get away with lots of options on that. But it's easy for me um, to keep warm with that. And it's about right. Like, you know, I generally put this on in the morning and don't ever take it off. <clears throat> when I'm hiking really hard, it's easy for me to pull these wool hats off and stick them in my pocket or whatever. So those are, covers the clothing deal. And then I'll go over all the kind of the accessory, what I call accessory stuff before I really open up this pack. So <clears throat> in terms of boots, my preference for um, these more mountaineering hunts, like sheep and goat hunts, is these hand wag boots. I've looked at other boots, but these just for me work the mo that work the best. Um, I can't see a downside. I mean, this pair of boots has probably been through 30 hunts at least, and you can see the rand is still attached. There's not a lot of issues. I mean, the issues that I do have are actually where, you know, a pair of crampons are on these for unrelated to hunting type of trips. But just in terms of hunting trips, I mean, they, they hold up well, they fit my, fit my feet well. So that's my, my preference <clears throat> on, uh, on mountaineering boots. I, did like a, I have like the Idaho, the crispy Idaho boots, and to me they're just not stiff enough and not enough support for these type of hunts. Um, for other hunts with, with <coughs> more mild terrain, I kind of have a preference more towards those boots just because even a Hanwag, and this is a pretty stiff soled boot actually, um, but it's, to me it's a very comfortable one. Um, it's gonna have, uh, it will, you know, it does wear your feet out a little bit quicker than, than a nice soft boot will. Um, and then in terms of optics, so I carry a, um, so in terms of a tripod, I don't have it here because it's actually sitting underneath the camera, but the tripod I use, is a Vortex SS tripod, and it's kind of a dinky little tripod, I'll admit that. Um, I just don't have the interest in moving to a bulkier, bulkier tripod. Um, I don't, generally don't have the room in my pack, and I, of course, don't want the extra weight. The problem with that SS uh, Vortex tripod is you gotta be really careful when you get big optics on it. So um, I tend to cradle around the feet of the tripod. I don't touch them, obviously. The tripod's still holding the optic, but I'm, you know, it's not like I'm gonna set my spotting scope up on a ridge line at 12,000 feet and then walk away for the wind, because the wind hypothetically gets strong enough to blow it off. And I also forewarn hunters if they're looking through my scope to not hit that tripod. You may not wanna take on that risk, and I totally get that, but it's just kind of a personal preference I have. I just don't want the bulk. I mean, a lot of these, you know, outdoorsmen, slicks, to me, they're, I mean, they're three times the bulk of a, of a Vortex SS. So that's my tripod deal. I use an outdoorsman pan head. They're absurdly expensive, but they work, work well for me and no complaints there. And they seem to be durable. I've had the same one probably for the last 25, 30 hunts with no issues. Um, so I carry an 85 millimeter ATX uh, Swarovski scope, uh, stupidly expensive, but it's kind of a one, you know, lifetime investment is the way I view it. I have quick release 
uh, outdoorsman attachments on it so I can stick, stick it on there on the tripod. Um, and so for all goat hunts, I'm generally going to carry a set, a chest binocular, which is in, a, I, I use an Alaska guys creation harness, which I'll go, I'll go through at the very end here once I get all this junk off of here. But I carry a pair of eight by 42s and then I carry <clears throat> just the spotter. So for goat hunts, that's all I'm carrying for optics. For sheep hunts, if I know I'm going to be somewhere where either I can put a lot of the weight on a pack horse or in a vehicle or side by side or whatever, on sheep hunts I'll also carry a pair of 15s um, with, a, with a tripod attachment on them. Um, I have a video on optics, kind of goes through that stuff in brutal, brutal detail. Um, but <clears throat> for sheep hunts I'll carry these. I, I always, uh, even though it doesn't fit very well in the little, the little Swarovski pouch, I actually leave my my uh, attachment there so I can just pull them out and put them on. Um, and really I, the reason that I will take these in addition to a spotting scope or even there, you know, if I have to, if I have to carry the weight a long ways, it kind of just depends on the day and the preference, uh, you know, or my preference that day, if I carry the scope or the 15s. If I don't have a way to carry them on a pack horse or something, I'm not, I generally don't carry both. Uh, these two items are pretty darn heavy to be lugging around in the mountains. So like, just as an example, if it's a sheep hunt where I want the 15s because they're you know, in some harder terrain to glass sheep up, um, and I know we're gonna be glassing hard, like if they're, they're potentially using timber or whatever, I, I might carry the 15s, particularly if it's a unit where we're just looking for a representative ram. Like we don't, we're not looking for a specific ram, a specific score or whatever. Then carrying a pair of 15s to me suffices. I mean, within a mile and a half or so with a pair of 15s, I can tell you if a ram is representative or not. So I don't need to carry a scope. But on the goat hunts, it's always the scope. The other stuff I carry, I, <clears throat> I've been carrying this Whippet for, again, I don't know, Bunch of hunts. Um, it's my preference for a walking stick. I, I <clears throat> this year I'll probably try two trekking poles just because my knees are finally turning to shit on me. But <clears throat> I've always had a preference for one because it gives my other hand free for whatever I need to, to do. Um, the reason I like to whip it, this deal, it's kind of like an ice axe slash trekking pole. Um, I don't use the ice axe part of this as an ice axe ever. Uh, and, and I don't think, I think that might be the reason that whippets are hard, so hard to find anymore is because I think that actually there's kind of an issue with this as an ice axe. And that's that if you self arrest with this, there's a very good chance it's not gonna hold you. So you, it looks like an ice axe, but for all intents and purposes, it's really not. One of the reasons I like it is I can hold it this way. Right, so I don't always have to have my trekking pole this way. For me personally, going downhill with weight, this is a huge advantage. And then yeah, this little tool, this little ax part of the tool, um, I have used it in times for, you know, to clean holes for setting up a tent or whatever, <clears throat> scraping a better spot. So you have an extra tool there. But the main thing is this. And I can tell you that this thing, I have run this thing down between boulders where I thought for sure it was gonna snap with my whole body weight you know, across it as a sheer force and I've never had an issue with it. So they're incredibly durable and they are, uh, this is carbon fiber, or carbon at least, I don't know, maybe carbon fiber is not the right word, but black diamond whip it. All right, <clears throat> um, the last thing that I'll carry sometimes, not a lot nowadays, but sometimes is a Kafaru gun bearer. Um, if I'm going to carry a hunter's gun, or for whatever reason I have a gun, I'll carry this. I can get the gun in front of me, which is nice. Um, but the other thing I can do with this is I can actually strap the gun on this Molly stuff on the back of my pack. So I can strap it there, just, you know, <clears throat> secure it that way. So that's an option. Um, the one thing I'll say about these is a couple times I've had, I haven't secured the top latch correctly. It's totally my fault, it's not a knock on Kafaru, but when you have this up here, make sure that thing is solid down and it's attached correctly. Because <clears throat> I've had, twice I've had a gun come out of that and hit, and usually what it is, I'm picking the pack up, I haven't got this latch correctly, the gun looks like it's in there, and when I pick the pack up, it just falls like this, you know. Um, 
<clears throat> it's not really a safety issue. I mean, it could be, you know, if a guy was packing around a gun with, with ammo in it. So this gun bearer, I, the last thing I'll say is just be careful with it because you have it there. It, it get, when you get your rifle on the gun, or you get your rifle on the pack, just make sure that's secure because you don't want that, that barrel to slap out of, your, out of this and hit the ground. I've had it done. Had it twice, wasn't a safety issue. I don't, I don't carry a rifle in my pack with a, with a round in the chamber or anything, but <clears throat> it'll really test out how you've got your scope mounted, right? So just be careful with them. It's not a knock, um, knock on Kofaro, because if you use it properly, your rifle's plenty, plenty secure. Just an issue that I've had. Um, so to the pack, what I actually carry around, <clears throat> starting from the outside, <clears throat> this here, this little pouch on my belt has always got my headlamp in it. I carry this, this big bulky lamp because the thing, so it's got a rear, it's got a rear battery pack. Um, I personally like this one, it's a Phoenix. And uh, the thing about it is, is <clears throat> it's got this thing that covers up the the power there, and I love that because then my light doesn't get turned on accidentally in there. And the other thing is it got, carries way more battery power than most, most headlamps, which makes it three times as heavy, but that thing is like a spotlight when I turn it up to max, and so I have this little waterproof thing for extra batteries. So that's my headlamp deal. <clears throat> on a day hunt in particular, man, you don't wanna, don't wanna have a lack of headlamps because uh, if you're walking out loaded up with meat or something coming down a mountain with a sheep or goat, it's problematic. So I would consider that a pretty serious safety thing. Make sure you have a headlamp, a good, reliable one, and a backup, which I'll show you the backup that's on my, on my, my bino harness. This is the knife I primarily use. This is an Ovis Hunter from Kestrel. They're great knives. <clears throat> Nate, the guy who runs the company, is a great, great individual, and I know it takes a lot of input from um, a bunch of sheep and goat guides. <clears throat> so, not a cheap knife, but uh, it's as, as far as I've seen, as good as a fixed blade knife comes. And then I have that on, a, on like a, I don't know what this thing's called, I think it's like something tech, um, but you can buy them and then you can put that, that uh, scabbard on there and that thing actually attaches to your molly. So it's there where I can get it, and this thing is pretty darn secure. You know, attaching a knife to the outside of a pack is actually a pretty difficult deal and it's kind of high risk. And when I mean high risk, like losing the knife. Uh, knives will come out of scabbards or whatever, but this setup has never failed me. On the other side here, I have this little pouch. I don't know what Kafaru calls it, but what I generally will carry in it is my phone or a handheld GPS. I trade off, just depends on where I'm at and what I, what I need. Um, I put Onyx Map on, I use it on my phone, and I also use it on this GPS. There's just, just depends on which one I'll bring, but I generally won't bring both anymore uh, now that all these phones have GPSs on them. <clears throat> this is what I use to sharpen my fixed blade. This is a little Kershaw steel. I, carry, I put that in there too. No big deal, super lightweight. And I can, I mean basically on the fixed blade knife deal as I found is just keep the things sharp, right? Uh, don't let them get super dull because then they're a bigger pain in the ass to get sharp. <laughs> all right. On the pack, I've just started using this little extra pack here. I can't remember what the hell the thing's called. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, what's this pack called? This thing? The Sherman. The Sherman, sweet. All right, so now that I've consulted Jimmy, this is called a Sherman. So, in this deal, kind of, you can use it as a gun bearer because you can put your gun in there and then strap the gun there. So that's cool. But the other thing about it is I do all my day hunts with this 22 mag and sometimes I don't want to open up the main flap and this gives me some outside storage. So in here what I carry, I always carry a steri pin, my snacks, And then, um, oh, I carry latex gloves, and you'll see that I'm just paranoid about stuff. So um, not on necessarily sheep and goats, but I always have latex uh, gloves in there for if I have to skin a bear or something. So <clears throat> I keep that in here where it's handy. Steri pin. 
in my next pocket, I carry two, these are uh, 55 gallon construction garbage bags. They're better than the little cheapo Charlie blank, you know, the little foil safety blankets they sell you in, in safety kits. Um, they're cheaper and they're better and I can, I got them all the time and they're multiple use because sometimes you need to pack garbage out too. <clears throat> in here I also have a, this is an Iridium sat phone and then this is an extra battery for the sat phone. It's in a waterproof Ziploc bag. Um, just reflecting on what I said before, I keep it waterproof. This phone, I mean, for my business, I kind of need it still, but generally my recommendation on satellite communication is to use inReaches. Those things are, are just as good, if not better, than sat phones, uh, just with the two-way text messaging ability, particularly now they all Bluetooth to your phone. So I carry extra batteries for all my devices and such. In this little pouch, I carry flagging tape, just a little chunk of tenacious tape for if I tear rain gear or whatever, I can repair it, I pack anything, or if my hunter tears something. And then I carry fire starters. Fire, fire starters and a lighter. I usually carry a couple lighters just in case. Fire starters I use are these little wax, this egg carton with uh, egg carton, with um, dryer linen in there and then wax on top of them. And then those are my fire starters. Light one of those on fire and they will last for, th just the thing will burn like a candle for 25, 30 minutes. So you can take your time starting a fire from one, but that's what you need for, for safety stuff for fire starter. And then I carry a measuring tape in there, just a, just a soft, just a soft one. Measure sheep or goats or whatever if guys are curious. Obviously not a not a necessity, but good to have. Sometimes it's fun to measure stuff in the while while everybody is excited. So that's in that pack there. <clears throat> I can lead it off there. <clears throat> Other outside stuff I have, I always keep my rain gear in here. This is a Kafaru or no, Kuyu Yukon jacket. Great jacket. Durable, all that. You could probably get away with their Chugach stuff. Um, I just don't wanna have both sets of rain gear, personally, um, and durability is pretty important to me, just being around horses or whatever else. Um, so for me, I, uh, I prefer to, uh, to just have the, the Yukon. In my other packet here, other, um, side pack on this 22 mag. This is a Kafaro 22 mag. A lot of times I'll carry this. Water really depends on what I know is up, it, up, up in the mountains. So if I know water is avail uh, you know, available um, when I'm hiking around, just this, just this will suffice. I'll fill up this Nalgene bottle and then I'll filter water or I'll steri pin it while I'm up in the mountains. I just have one of these dual caps on here so I can put dirty water in the bottom over the actual lip of this thing down here. Right, steri pin it in the Nalgene, and then I can drink out of this top spot here, right? So there's no contamination there. If water's hard to come by, I keep I <clears throat> bring a large Nalgene also. Um, and if it's somewhere in between, a lot of times I'll just throw one of these in, a little water bottle. So I always have a little extra water because <clears throat> you never know. And then actually, particularly on goats, um, <clears throat> my preference on goats is to have a little extra water so I can put a little water on their horns for photos. Um, makes them look nicer and actually makes them look a whole lot bigger actually. So that's like a little, little tip on that stuff. And then I always carry a pair of wool mittens. These are my preference. These are like $10 on Amazon. Not a big deal. Pretty durable, but if they uh, fall apart on you, just buy another pair. It's not, not the big deal. All right. So in my little top pouch of my 22 mag up here, that's easy to get to. I carry earplugs. A lot of times when I'm headed up the mountain, I throw these over my neck first thing. Shades, sunglasses. Always carry these little eye drops. Ever since I had LASIK, for whatever reason, my eyes get dry up in the high country, so I carry those. And it's actually not, uh, not rare for somebody who hasn't spent a whole lot of time at altitude to get dry eyes up there. So. 
Uh, I like it for that too. <clears throat> it's kind of a saving grace deal. For uh, sun lotion up there, I carry this Dermatone. Um, it's actually like a, it's like a thick, it's like a thick sun lotion. And the thing about it is you can use it for sun lotion on your face. It's like a cream, but you can also put it on your lips and it works really good. This stuff's on Amazon. Um, that stuff was suggested to me from mountaineering guys and it works. And then baby wipes, uh, those are for, um, you know, clean your hands up or whatever when you're working on goats. But the main thing is that's <clears throat> usually what I use for if I got to take a shit while I'm guiding somebody. So got to have those. That's thus important, huh? Don't want to leave those or leave home without that stuff. And you want them readily available, right? Uh, okay, so <clears throat> this pack, this pouch here, if I'm, in, if I'm hunting out of a vehicle at all or spotting from a vehicle, this is an outdoorsman window thing. Stick it on there, put my spotter on it, or put my, my pan head on the top and then spot off of it from a vehicle. That thing is awesome if you're vehicle hunting at all. Uh, here's a phone scope, I keep that in there. Or I stick it on my phone beforehand or whatever. Um, this is just a cut off of one of these, those cheap sleeping pads. I use that to sit on. And then I'm also just paranoid about screwing my spotter up or whatever, even though it's in a great case. But I just, so I'll wrap it sometimes when I stick it in here if I know I'm gonna be in rougher terrain. <clears throat> um, game bags. These new game bags, like from um, <clears throat> these guys, the caribou guys, but also the tag bag uh, guys, um, as far as I can see, they're pretty much the same exact uh, deal. They're super lightweight, durable, you can reuse them. So. <clears throat> these kind of smell a little bit, you can smell a mountain goat on them, but <clears throat> they are clean. <clears throat> you can just wash them in your washing machine once you get all the, the chunky stuff off. I carry a first aid uh, and emergency kit. Um, I could go over the, everything in here, but it's gonna it'd give you another 30 minutes to this video. But generally, the things you need, um, it, like you can use those garbage bags or whatever for insulation to keep you warm. Another way to start a fire, and then medications. Imodium is a big one I carry, aspirin, ibuprofen. Those are the things you're generally gonna use more than anything else. Um, but I have some compression stuff I generally will carry, uh, which is important, and I also carry a bunch of stuff that I'm just forced to by the, by the Forest Service. So this is, there's excess in here than what you really need, but most people are gonna be able to get away with about a half, half of that. Sorry about the, the blood on there, but um, I guess that's why I got it in a dry bag. So the main things is you wanna be able to start a fire, you wanna have an insulation layer in there of some sorts. Um, those are the big ones, and then, you know, just like more what I call your convenience first aid, you know, your medications, mole skin, stuff like that. Um, and the, hey, I'll just go over this real quick too. How I roll these is two rolls, push all the air out, which in a 22 mag like this where you're limited with air, it's important that you get all the air out of your dry bags. The other one, the other bag I carry on my day is just a kill kit. So I got my game bags in here, in here, I'll generally have a Havilon <clears throat> as kind of a backup knife. Another pair of rubber gloves, some baby wipes, that sort of thing. Um, this is again like kind of a customized deal for most people. They figure out what they use and uh, they'll make a, you know, a kill kit with that stuff. I mean, basically knives. Um, I do carry sutures in there because I suture goats in sheep's mouth mouth shut, um, so I'll, I'll show you that. So I got my little bag here, it's just got a little paracord and extra tape, baby wipes. marker so you can carry like the little sutures that like the little pre-made surgical sutures you just want to make sure you get the heavy stuff and then um, but this is just a basically a leather needle needle with a little suture material and what I'll do with that is I can just suture the ram or the Billy's mouth shut and what that prevents is it makes the goat look a lot, the goat or ram look a lot more natural because that mouth will be naturally shut. So basically, I saw from 
bottom of the gum, the top of the gum, and then tighten it up. And then you can take great pictures. You don't have that floppy jaw thing going. So <clears throat> that's probably the only notable thing in my kill kit that makes, um, might be a good, good tip for you. But that's pretty much it. If for some reason I'm in a really cold environment, sometimes I bring one of these little charge packs. Just for my phone, I'd ha I hate to get up somewhere <clears throat> and uh, have my phone die because I use it for pictures. So it's just one of these little, little charge packs. This thing will charge my phone like 10 times. But they are kind of heavy, so I, I, I use my judgment on that if I'm going to carry it or not. So hopefully that's been helpful. I'm going to clear this stuff off and go over my harness real quick with you. All right, so before I jump to uh, my bino harness and what I carry in that, um, I just want to mention that I do always wear gaiters on sheep and goat hunts. Um, <clears throat> when I say always, I mean literally always. I can't remember a hunt where I didn't carry them. So obviously they're nice um, if there's snow or anything, but they're also nice if there's any dew vegetation like that. Also keeps rocks and shit out of your boots. So. Um, those are almost always used. These are Kuyu Yukon Gators. I, I've, I, I haven't used any in probably other alternatives in five or six years, but I did before these and these were the best at the time. And so I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm happy with them. So on my bino harness, this little deal here is just a little microfiber cloth to clean my optics. I have wind indicator in the top. By wind, it's a fancy term for talcum powder in a little bottle. Um, test the wind inside. So I have a pair of EL ranges that I use. I prefer eight by 42, just my preference. I'd say generally the majority of guides and hunters, um, their chest binoculars is gonna be a 10 by 42. Um, in the side here, I carry an extra knife. Um, this is a little Havilon knife and some gloves. I carry a Havilon in here in the case that I drop my pack I go with a hunter and go harvest an animal, and then at least I can gut the animal with that Havilon. I mean, I can even quarter them and do the whole thing with that one knife if I need to. So I like to have a knife on me all the time, particularly when I have my fixed blade attached to my pack. You know, I can set it down and get away from it. So that's just an extra safety here. Fire safety stuff, more fire starter, lighter. In the back, I carry all my tags, uh, you know, licenses, stuff like that. Um, in the front here, these are elk calls. I don't carry those obviously on sheep and goat hunts. I carry a couple extra batteries. Um, and then I carry an extra pair of earplugs and then a lens pin. Just up to you if, you, if you're paranoid like myself and wanna always clean your optics, then those, these are nice. Um, and then I always carry extra battery for my range finding binoculars in here. And so probably the, the most significant thing I carry is an extra headlamp. This is the Petzl E-Lite. I think, believe they still make this one. And this thing is, has saved me several times. Um, just, you know, my main lamp gets uh, turned on in the pack and batteries die or whatever, or a hunter doesn't bring a lamp. So that's the extra. And that thing, that thing is a pretty good lamp. I mean, it doesn't have a strap on it, like a full strap. It's just got this, you know, this, kind of slinky deal going, but you can strap it around your head and work perfectly for a, a uh, pack out. Not a great primary lamp, but a great backup lamp. So that kind of covers it. Um, so next, Jimmy will show you what his setup is. Like I said, you're gonna see some similarities, you're gonna see some differences, um, and hopefully that's helpful to you. On my uh, sheep and goat day pack, um, I'm typically wearing in, especially in the early season, a lightweight shirt. Uh, this is the QU uh, Tiburon shirt. Uh, breathes really well. Um, another shirt that I might wear is this Sitka Core Lightweight hoodie. It's really awesome. Um, if I'm hunting in a, a high traffic area, especially in uh, an area where there's a bunch of 14ers doing a goat hunt, there's a um, bunch of hikers and it's kind of weird um, when, when you got a gun strapped to your back. Uh, and a, one of the biggest ways to avoid awkward conversations is just, just to not wear camo. So uh, solid colors really work well. Uh, wearing a good pair of underwear. These are the Sitka um, 
forget what these are, but uh, wearing high quality underwear is key, prevent chafing. And then I'm also wearing a uh, lightweight pant. These are the Prana Zion. They're, they're not a hunting pant, but you can buy them on Amazon for like 40 bucks. And uh, in my opinion, they're the same, same pant as like a $180 Sika Ascent pant. Uh, so I highly recommend these Prana Zions. If I'm day hunting uh, later in the season, I might switch to an insulated pant. These are the QU Attack pants. Um, again, in solids, uh, they have big, big zippers, side vents on them. Um, because during the middle of the day, it will get hot, or when you're making a steep climb up the mountain, they, uh, it's pretty nice to have uh, some airflow. Uh, also, as it gets a little colder, I'm probably still wearing one of those same shirts that I can strip down as I climb up the mountain. But then I might throw a, uh, a soft shell jacket um, over it. This is the QU uh, guide jacket. Again, has a bunch of vents, pretty lightweight. Um, just a good overall jacket. Depending on the weather, if it's, if there's snow on the ground or if, the, if it rained the night before, I may or may not wear gaiters. These are the QU, um, the QU gaiters, pretty good. Um, I really like them. They're, they're Velcro on the front and not the, uh, not a zipper, which is nice. You don't get uh, ice build up in them. I'm also wearing a high quality sock. This, these are uh, uh, Thurlow socks. Um, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, $20 sock and uh, you can wear these puppies all week if you want. Um, going to be wearing a belt as I go in and again if it's cold I may bring a beanie. I may not. Uh, you can always start in your pack, but when you sit in glass and if it starts snowing, um, it's pretty nice to, to have a beanie. This is the first year that I'm trying out a, uh, a trek and pull. This is a Lecky, um, and it's kind of got a cane, cane configuration. I'm just, uh, I'm going to be using one instead of two. On my pack, this is a Kafaru 22 mag. Um, it's a... Uh, little over 3,000 cubic inches. It's got these two uh, wings on them that I stuff my tripod in and can stuff a, uh, a spotter in. For a tripod, I use a uh, Outdoorsman um, Rock Steady, uh, which is really nice, but you would pay for it in, in the weight. It's probably uh, close to a pound heavier. Um, and then on top of the tripod, I have an outdoorsman's head. Um, these things are super smooth. Um, ball bearings in there are awesome. Um, just, just great for glassing. The, the spotting scope that I use is a Vortex uh, Razor 85 millimeter. I highly recommend going with a, with a big objective, especially on sheep and goats. Um, you get to you get a bunch of light in there and uh, and it's, 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 way, it's way nicer um, when you compare an 85 next to a 65. Inside my pack, I always carry rain gear. This is the QU uh, Yukon rain gear set. Um, I always carry the rain gear no matter whether they're, they're calling for, for snow or, or rain. Um, in the mountains, the storms blow in that they never saw coming. I also carry, no matter the time of year, a, I carry a puffy jacket and, and I carry the puffy jacket inside of a dry bag uh, just to prevent it from getting wet. Um, when these things get wet, uh, they do absolutely zero good for you. This is the QU uh, Super Down. And any, any old dry bag will work. Um, this one just happens to be a QU one. Uh, gonna be carrying my lunch in there. Um, a lot of times I don't carry a sandwich, it's just a bunch of snacks. I always carry a, a cover for my pack in case it starts raining. And then I also carry 
uh, reusable game bags. I, I prefer the reusable ones um, just so I'm not, you know, every season, uh, hopefully every season I don't have to buy uh, new ones because they're covered in blood. I can just wash these. On a guided hunt, uh, I always carry a first aid kit. Inside that first aid kit, um, just pretty much basic stuff. Uh, one of the big ones is, is Pepto. Um, Pepto or Imodium that can really save you on a hunt. Um, and then uh, also some baby aspirins um, in case someone uh, feels like they may be getting a, a heart attack coming on. And then I also carry a kill kit. Uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory, but I may carry um, flagging tape with me. Uh, inside that kill kit, I have a Havilon with spare blades. I really like the Havilons for making my first cuts. Um, and, then, and then I'll move to a fixed blade. This is a Benchmade Steep Country. Um, great, for, great for skinning. Um, inside this kill kit as well, I carry some sutures, especially on goat and sheep when after, uh, after you shoot them, they tend to, their bottom jaw kind of hangs uh, and you can suture that jaw up. Uh, it makes for better um, trophy photos. Uh, and then I also carry a, uh, an emergency blanket, um, obviously in case you get stuck out there, but these things are great. When you're quartering, you can open one up and, and lay your quarters on them and not get them dirty. For, for the hunters, uh, obviously you might want to keep your, um, your, uh, your tag in your kill kit as well. I also carry a SteriPen uh, for sanitizing uh, water. Uh, I switched to this last year over a filter and it's a game changer in my opinion. It takes 90 seconds to um, sterilize one 32 ounce Nalgene. Um, and, uh, and you also don't have to carry a syringe to backflow your, your filter on, uh, on, on, on water filter uh, devices. Carry a Leatherman, you'd be surprised how many times uh, having a pair of pliers or a screwdriver might come in handy. Uh, this is just a super basic Leatherman, nothing special. Carry a map of the area, um, even if you have uh, your phone with you with an Onyx, it's pretty nice just to get a big overlay of the area and not have to scroll around. Carry a lighter and a little fire starting uh, material. Uh, and then on the bottom of my pack, I always carry this, this crazy creek. It's a little chair uh, and it is also a game changer for, uh, for glassing. Um, you don't get a wet butt, uh, and, and, and sitting on rocks is not, not, not fun for hours at a time. <clears throat> uh, on my bag, I have attached a water bottle holder, and then um, some belt pouches as well. Uh, this is a whole Kafaru setup. Um, it's their hunter frame. Um, it's a little heavier than, uh, than some other packs uh, that, I, that I've used, but it certainly holds up um, a little better. In the past, I've used Kafaru, or um, I'm sorry, QU, QU bags. This is the QU Icon Pro 3200. Uh, it's a great pack, uh, very similar in size to the Kafaru 22 mag. However, I found that um, it just didn't hold up as well as the, as the Kafaru does. Um, but if you're just doing one backpack hunt a year or um, one, one big hunt, um, these things are great. Super lightweight, you know, probably they're significantly uh, less weight than the, than the uh, Kafaru. This is the uh, QU 1850, it's a little small in my opinion, especially for these sheep and goat hunts. 
um, when you're carrying around a spotter and a tripod, uh, you know, it might be a great day pack for, um, for a deer or an elk hunt. Also carrying around toilet paper and, and hand sanitizer in my pack and a, uh, and a headlamp. For the boots, uh, what I'm wearing on a, on a day hunt, um, specifically for the, for the stalk, um, when, you, when you have a big hill to climb up, big mountain, um, these are the Scarpa Grand Drews. They're super stiff boot, a little stiff for just walking around on the trails, but as soon as you start going up or down, the steep stuff where the goats and sheep live, um, these things are awesome, you can't beat them. Uh, if you're just hunting out of a, from the truck, glassing from the roads, you might wanna just wear a comfortable pair of shoes, or if you're gonna go and um, just do a small hike to get a, to, a glassing, to a glassing point, you might wanna wear a different boot. Um, but on your stalk, this is, what, uh, this is what I wear, and, and these things are awesome. I also carry a GPS with, a, it's got the uh, topography of the area that I'm hunting. Um, also on my phone, I have a downloaded map of the area on the ONX maps in satellite and um, topo. Uh, and that's pretty nice, especially when you get into some of the goat country that has uh, mining claims on it. Um, you know, you gotta avoid the, the private property. In the truck, I'm keeping my window mount for my, uh, for my spotter. Uh, this is an outdoorsman. And then as far as binos go, again, if I'm in the truck, I'm gonna be, uh, I don't really have to worry about weight. So I really like these Swarovski 15 by 56 SLCs. These things are a game changer when it comes to glassing long range, especially when you put them on the tripod. Uh, in my opinion, they can't be beat. However, if I go up on the stalk, I'm probably gonna switch these, these um, big binos out for a lighter pair of binos. Um, uh, and these are 10 by 42s. In my bino chest pack, that's where I keep my, my GPS. I also keep a, a wind checker and um, keep a lighter in there as well. And that's, that's pretty much what I use on a day hunt for goat and sheep.